Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video I want to show you a template for making a laser cut box with a sliding lid. The cover on this box slides on these grooves that are carved on the inner faces of the box, and it's pretty neat because the box is very low profile and the cover has a very simple mechanism. To make the slots we're going to be using an engraving operation on the laser cutter that removes just enough material so the top piece fits in and can move freely. Uh, that's about 0.05 inches deep or about one and a quarter millimeters. I'm going to walk you through the recommended materials, the different options on the template, and some recommended settings for cutting and engraving the grooves. And also I'll show you how to put the box together. So let's jump into it. So a quick note about material choices. We'll be making the box out of plywood, but when we were making the initial tests for the box, we found out that not all the plywoods that we use would give us a consistent depth of engraving that would ensure that the lid would slide in nicely. And the best results we got were with, were with the kind of plywood that has an MDF center, also known as an MDF core. And that makes sense because MDF is a uniform material, unlike wood grain. Uh, here, I made a couple of tests. So I engraved a circle with exactly the same settings on these two pieces of wood. The one on the left is some construction lumber and the one on the right is MDF. And if you look carefully at the one on the left, you'll see that there are differences on the depth based on the wood grain pattern. It looks like the denser areas are not as deep while on the MDF, the entire circle is pretty consistent. To find out if your plywood has an MDF core, it's probably best to check with the maker or the seller of the product. For this example, we're gonna be using some medium maple from Glowforge, which they specify on the website has an engineer wood core, which uh, works pretty well for our purposes. But if you can't do that, or you really wanna find out for yourself, you can also do it. So I cut these samples of different woods and they're long enough that I can hold them safely while taking a knife to them. I think the easiest way to find out is to uh, delaminate the plywood. In this sample, you can see that the slice of wood in the center has a grain, which means that is not MDF. But with this sample, you can see the center doesn't have a distinct grain pattern. It's actually a uniform paper-like substance. And that's the kind of core we are looking for. You will find the link to this project page in the video description. Here, I'm going to start by scrolling down to see all the different options I can change. I'm going to start by specifying the width, the outer width of my box, uh, by typing two and a half inches and then pressing enter. So now that we specified the width of the box, let's continue specifying all the outer dimensions. So the depth, I want to go for 3.75 inches. I'm going to press enter to confirm. For the height, I want one and a quarter inches. And I'm going to press enter to confirm. And those are all the outer dimensions of the box. If I want to know what the box measures on the inside, I can always look at this call out box at the bottom. The next dimension I want to specify is the material thickness. And this dimension is fairly important in this project because it's going to affect both the fit of the tabs when assembling the sides of the box. And it's also going to affect the size of the groove where the lid is going to go. So for the medium maple from Glowforge, I measured a thickness of 1.34 inches. For the curve compensation, I'm going to leave the default number, but you should know that the bigger this value, the tighter the fit is going to be. The tab width changes the size of the interlocking joints, and I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller because I want a little bit more space here. So I'm going to scrub down until it seems reasonable. I'm going to go with, with that. I'm going to keep the defaults on the remaining options, but let's go through them quickly in case you need to make any changes. The engraved tolerance is the amount that gets added to that engraved slot to allow the lid to go in and out. If it were left to juice the material thickness, it would be too tight. So if you increase that number, there would be even more wiggle room for the lid to move. The lid lip is the space between the top of the box and the engraved slot. So you might have to make that bigger if your material is too weak in that uh, place. And the lid overhang compensates for the small amount of the lid that goes 
uh, into the slot in the back of the box. Now that we're done setting all the options, we are ready to cut the box. So I'm going to download an SVG file by pressing the blue button. And then we'll check it out on the Glowforge interface. So I have a sheet of medium maple plywood loaded in the machine and let's see about the settings on each one of the operations. The first thing here is that little half circle that is the finger uh, catch that we can use to pull the lid out of the box. And for that one, we're just going to use the default uh, SD graphic engraving. So no changes there. With this material and this machine, we need some custom settings for the slot. So let's check that operation. Go to manual and for the speed, 325 has worked well for us for the precision power choose 100 which you should know is not the same as full power so make sure it's 100 precision power and then for the lines per inch let's use 195 if you're using a different machine or a different material make sure you stick till the end of the video and i'll show you how to test different settings to get the slot choose right for the cut we're going to use also the default proof grade cut. And I think we're ready to go. So let's send these. After coming out of the machine, the engraved areas need a little cleanup. And they can be rubbed with a piece of scrap material to make them as flat as possible. And then you can finish it with an old toothbrush. These needs to happen on the three faces that are going to accommodate the lid. And we can do something similar for the finger catch. It's also much better to do these before removing the masking tape so the surfaces of the box don't get too dirty. For the assembly, I like to start with the bottom and then fit the back and then the sides. Make sure this section goes towards the back because we need the front open to accept the lid. I got a nice snug fit with this one, but if you're having trouble, you could use a mallet to gently tap the sides in place. The last piece to go on is the front of the box. And then we can slide the lid on. I like that this box looks very clean and it is very functional. I also like that we use an engraving operation to create a mechanical feature and even that little finger catch uh, because engraving is usually used for decorative purposes and in this case it's actually facilitating a sort of mechanical action. So I hope you found this video useful. You can help the channel by leaving us a comment, leaving us a thumbs up and of course subscribing and thank you for watching. And if you're, still, if you're still here, I did say we were going to talk about testing those engraving settings. So let's do that. If you go back to the project page and scroll all the way down to where there are the cutting and engraving settings that we just discussed for the Glowforge, you'll see that we have also a link to these other instructions in case you're using a different machine or a different material. So let's look at those. And you will also find a link to this project in the video description. So let's scroll down to see the different options that we have. The idea here is that you can download a file with two pieces. One is a little slab that has uh, a number of bars that you can engrave with different settings. And the second piece is a little gauge that you can use as a tester to see what kind of setting works better for the kind of depth that you need. The most important parameter to specify here is the material thickness. So if I'm going to test it for the material that we just used, I would enter 0.134 inches. And that determines the size of this slot. And it will be slightly bigger to accommodate for it moving about. And of course, you can add more slots if you want to test a bunch at once. But I found that about five is sufficient. And then the numbers that we are scoring to have as a reference are the size of the gauge uh, or the depth of the gauge right here and then the starting speeds. So I started at 275, but you can start at any other number that you want to choose. And why the speed only? Because it seemed useful to change just one parameter at the time. So leave the power the same and the lines per inch the same on all the slots 
and then vary only the speed. So as an example, in the Glowforge interface, this is what it would look like. So each engraved slot has the same uh, power and lines per inch, but I'm varying the speed. So I'm going to go through these, so 275, 300, 325, 350 and 375 and then I'm um, scoring the numbers so I can have them as a reference on the piece and then cutting the outlines. So let's cut these. Then go ahead and uh, clean each slot with a scrap piece of material in the same fashion that we did before and uh, scrub it with a toothbrush. And then go ahead and test each one of the settings until your gauge stops and then you know is the sufficient depth. So I hope that helps you make some cool looking functional boxes like this one and give us a thumbs up, subscribe and leave us a comment. Let us know what you want to see next. And thank you so much for watching.